know that over 20,000 children lose their lives every single five years to sickle cell anemia and out of this we have 0.7 percent of ugandans that actually have the sickle cell disease and out of that you and i who have not gone for testing the numbers tell us that 13.3 percent of the population have that sickle cell gene and know nothing about it so we bring in the situation home and in studios i have a sickler with me madame Val Lena Nyambura Omach, thank you so much for making time. Thank you. Next to her is her parent, Mr. Patrick Omach, thank you so much for making time. Okay. We also have Dr. Richard Lukandwa, thank you so much for making time. You. you have been the doctor for quite some time now, but let's start with your story, Valene. Um, at what point were you diagnosed with sickle cell disease? Uh, my parents told me I was diagnosed at the age of uh, around six, seven months. Yes. Six, six, seven months. Yeah, around six, seven months. Okay. Daddy, at that point when it was about six, seven months, of course she was born, you lived with her for six months, and then it got to the diagnos diagnosis. What symptoms was she presenting with for you people to take her to hospital and then that the diagnosis being made? Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, first and foremost, we, we, I didn't know what, what sickle cell was. Uh, but we started getting worried that after every time she was sick, she had uh, infections after two weeks, same same infections. So until one day, one friend of mine in, uh, advised me maybe we go and uh, do a test for sickle cell. Mm -hmm. When we did it, that's when it came out that she 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 suffered from sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. Was it a test on you and your wife? No, or we just her alone. Or her alone. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it showed that me and my wife we were curious mm -hmm. for her to come out or to be a sickler. Mm -hmm. yes. Is she a first one? No, she's a second one. Okay. Yes. And the first one is okay? The first one is okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Dr. Tari, many are watching us today mm -hmm. uh, and like we've seen, 13.3% are actually carriers and know nothing about it. So what is sickle cell disease? Sickle cell disease is adult somal recessive inherited disorder. To simplify it, you take a gene from the father and a gene from the mother and then you get the disease. There are several variants. You may be a carrier, you may get a gene from one parent and then you get a, a normal gene from the other parent. You will just be a sickle cell carrier. Mm -hmm. There's a wide spectrum of other small sickle cell disorders, but that's the main thing. Sickle cell disease, where you get both genes from pe both parents, or sickle cell trait, where you get one normal gene from a parent and an abnormal gene. Basically, it's a disorder of the blood system, mm -hmm. hemoglobin. Uh, hemoglobin is important to take blood and oxygen around our, our system. And so if the, the gene is defective, the blood cells which carry the oxygen around the body tend to be very fragile and they sickle, mm -hmm. hence the name sickle cells. Once they sickle, they can't go through the blood vessels, especially the small blood vessels, which is the microcirculation. Mm -hmm. In that, they cause various problems. Okay. You get pain because blood is not going to the end organs, which is a very frequent problem. You get anemia because, because of their nature, they are easily broken down in the body. Mm -hmm. And then also you get infections in the worst of cases because once these cells sickle, they destroy organs like the spleen. The spleen is important in, in trying to weed out uh, bacteria. Okay. So you don't have the protection, yes. So the variety of problems come with sickle cell, yes. All right. So after the diagnosis, um, Daddy, just give us the journey. How has it been for you before we get to her? Because um, I know when she was six, seven months, diagnosis was made. She just couldn't understand what was happening. She was still a tiny baby. But for you as parents, how was it taking care of uh, an infant who is sick? <coughs> okay, Amaya, let me say, let me start by saying it has been really a very, very hard journey. It has really made me to be strong first and foremost, mm -hmm. because it, like an infant, you see, somebody doesn't know, doesn't know anything. The infant just relies on you for everything. So you have to be there financially, emotionally for her, but be there for us, she's growing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing that I would like to put across is it is not a cheap, this is very expensive. It's 
very expensive mm -hmm. this, and you have to have resources because every time, most of the time, she is admitted in the hospital okay. with various infections, the infections and the crisis that come. Uh, remember, just last this year, um, she has been admitted like four times, staying two weeks, mm. three weeks in mm. hospital. Mm. So it's really very expensive. Okay. It's all been there. Vale. You're not 20 years old. Yes. You've lived with it for all these years, yes. um, from diagnosis to now. How has the journey been for you? I was asking you, did you go to a boarding school? And you told me yes. So how have you been coping? Uh, as I told you earlier, my symptoms began worsening as I began aging. The older I get, the more sick I seem to be. Because I remember growing up uh, from, you know, primary school to high school, my symptoms were not really like the, let's say the crises, they were less, uh, I didn't really get frequent infections, so I was, I could say I was a normal child mm -hmm. growing up with my siblings, my parents have always treated us equally, mm -hmm. whatever my parents do, I will do, whatever, you know, wherever they go, I will go, there, there's never been something like, you know, Valine is sick, so she cannot do certain activities unless I'm, you know, maybe sick in bed or in hospital, right. so, Growing up as was not really a challenge because um, I was not getting as sick as you know I am now. So I was a normal child. Okay. I could play and do everything that you know a normal child could do. Not until I reached at the age of uh, 18, okay. 17. That's when the symptoms began, you know, worsening the recurrent infections and the pain. So yeah. Doctor, how would you explain that? Um, growing up when she was younger coping with the disease wasn't so hard but now like she's saying it's getting worse as she becomes older can you explain that to us well sickle cell disease um, is a spectrum of disorders and what tends to happen uh, the, the the symptoms vary from one person to another mm. in some people the symptoms will be very mild in others it will be very very severe and they are hospitalized most of the time and they get these recurrent episodes it depends on the percentage of the sickled cells uh, like I said in the sickle cell trait you get 60% normal cells 40% uh, uh, abnormal cells mm -hmm. but in the sickle cell anemia even when both are all, all cells are sickle, sickle cells there's a wide variety of presentation Mm -hmm. But we know that as these people sometimes get older, the th stressful conditions may increase. For example, uh, the level of activity is very important. Dehydration, because if you're dehydrated, you tend to get the problems very quickly. Also, if you are in areas where there's reduced oxygen, for example, if you go up mountains, more mountainous areas, and sometimes we tend to avoid things like uh, Pressured air, unpressured aircraft mm -hmm. because of the uh, reduced oxygen. So the presentation is variable from one person to another, you can't okay. predict, but as you grow older, the level of activity increases, predisposing you to the problems of the disease. Okay, but as doctors, in terms of coping with the disease and managing this disease um, in the best way possible, what do you tell these patients in terms of diet, in terms of medication, in terms of checkup? What exactly do sh should they look out for? Yeah, well, education is extremely important because we know about the stressful conditions, so they should avoid uh, dehydration. If they're going to do activity, it has to be programmed. You don't start with very heavy activity. Then obviously there are medications that are available. We have a drug called hydroxyurea, which is useful in trying to prevent the frequency of the uh, problems. Mm -hmm. Then also, because they are prone to infections, we normally give them an antibiotic, a small dose of antibiotic, to prevent infections. Yes, but what is crucial, the main message obviously, I know you're going to come to that, is mm -hmm. to try and prevent this okay. by partner counseling before they give birth to children. All right. Um, Daddy, how has it been for you, the treatment journey, since she was diagnosed at six, seven months to now that she's, you know, 20 years old? How has it been cost-wise? Uh, it, it has been really expensive. It has been really expensive that uh, you find most of the time she might be hospitalized and I don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. I have to borrow money from my boss 
most of the time I have to talk to, she is the doctor mm -hmm. for her, mm -hmm. to talk to the hospital maybe, mm -hmm. to give her some period to look for the money and to pay. So it has been really expensive for the family. Okay. And uh, sometimes you find some other kids cannot go to school because the money for the fees mm -hmm. have been used to the, uh, for the hospital. Mm -hmm. So it has not been easy. Dr. Richard, yes. um, give us the numbers. Uh, ideally, one session of treating a sickler, how much does it cost? All the treatment is very variable. You may come into hospital with just a painful crisis and stay in the hospital for a day, but there are costs of nursing, there are costs of seeing the doctor, uh, there are costs of uh, being in a hospital bed, there are costs of the drugs. So a simple episode, just a simple episode, may cost you about 150,000 shillings. Uh -huh. But I remember we've had periods where patients are very sick, including Valin, which involve intensive care unit, and just one episode into hospital takes millions of shillings because for example a day in the intensive care unit costs about two million so it's it's very 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 expensive and I also know the other aspect especially for sicklers whose conditions have worsened then you look into blood transfusion yeah how much is that ideally a blood transfusion itself per se is free of charge okay however the hospital stay because they will charge you for staying in the bed they will charge you for the consumables so even what is supposed to be free has a cost attached to it for example blood transfusion may cost you about 70,000 shillings mm -hmm. and yet some of these are very frequent in these patients yes okay so over and above blood transfusion and just managing the you know the disease what other treatment options are there well uh, the only curative uh, treatment for this condition, and it's also not available if you're a certain age, usually above 30, mm -hmm. is a bone marrow transplantation. Mm -hmm. But that is also very expensive. It's in tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, so that's obviously out of reach for many Ugandans. And it also it's not a straightforward process. Mm -hmm. It involves getting a donor who is going to give you the cells that are going to replace the cells that are producing the defective hemoglobin. And so this has to be a matching donor? It has to be a matching donor. And that's a process. It's also an expensive process mm. to do that. This treatment is not available here in Uganda. Uh, our partners who currently help us, who are a bit affordable, is in India. But even in India, it's quite expensive. I'm sure uh, Mr. March will try and uh, give us the exact costs but it runs in tens of tens of thousands of dollars. Why don't we have that treatment option here in Uganda? One, availability of the specialized equipment mm -hmm. and also availability of the specialists. The people who treat sickle cell are hematologists and we've got quite a very small number of those in Uganda. So both personnel and the equipment and facility, facilities for the process. You've already told us that even managing this disease is quite expensive here in Uganda. So my, 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 my mind directly goes to the less fortunate, the less privileged who are sick as well. What happens to them? Unfortunately for the less for, for, uh, fortunate, most of them die because they can't afford the treatment. And obviously it's very difficult as well to access some of this specialized treatment in areas that are not in the city. Mm -hmm. Some of the patients will become very ill and require intensive care units. Mm -hmm. But we know that most of the intensive care units in this country are in Kampala, maybe a few cities out of town, but most people all over the country may not be able to get life-saving treatment, so it's very unfortunate. Let me ask you, Valin, um, throughout your journey now, 20 years um, living with this disease, have you come across groups that um, suffer the same thing, that motivate you, you walk together the journey? Have you found support groups? Yes, I've found several groups mm -hmm. that I'm also participating in, and they have turned out to really encourage me psychologically, emotionally, because you feel like, you know, what you're going through, you have other warriors you know suffering the same and you uh, you share out you freely share out your worries and problems and feelings to them mm -hmm. because you also feel that maybe someone has gone through what you are going through so it's easier for you to you know uh, confide mm -hmm. in a person who goes through you. who has gone through what you go through or is passing through the same mm -hmm. yes and what are these groups just for the sake of the viewer maybe who is in the same journey with you for them to just know what groups are there and maybe approach them as well uh, most of them are online groups okay uh, the current one that I participate in it's called a sickle cell chat room 
where we share out our problems, also parents to warriors, doctors, caregivers, so it's a, it's a collective group. Okay. But uh, at the end of the day, we all have the same objective, you know, fighting sickle cell and managing sickle cell disease at large. All right, yes. okay. Daddy, um, the two of you are in this T-shirt. Um, tell yes. us more about that, because I know um, Valin is scheduled to travel to India for treatment, uh, and of course that's why you're here as well. Tell us more about this campaign that you're spearheading. Okay, this campaign started when uh, Valin was last very sick, and one of, uh, one of her kidneys got damaged. In fact, now we are talking the liver is swollen, and the doctor can confirm with you that when this organ starts failing, it will continue like that. Mm -hmm. So I sat down like a family and thought, what's the best thing I can do for my daughter? And then we decided to seek for the bone marrow transplant. We contacted a doctor from India who even came here to see Valin. Mm -hmm. He gave us the costings. Then we started uh, to fundraise. We have done the first car wash. So this is for our second car wash, okay. which is going to be at the National Museum on Saturday 15th. Okay. We are going to do car wash. We are going to have many activities. We have tickets for car wash. To wash a car is going to cost 50,000, mm -hmm. but the entry is free. Mm -hmm. we, are, we have these stations, we are going to sell them. We have food, we have uh, artists. So we, we, we are asking for people just to come in numbers and help us support Valley. How much is the budget for treatment the in budget, India? The budget right now, it's uh, around 200 million because the process Uganda shillings? Uganda shillings. Okay. Like 50,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. The process we're going to do is called uh, half match bone marrow transplant. Now, if you don't get a perfect match, mostly it comes from the siblings, there is another one called half match which comes from one of the parents. Mm -hmm. So apparently this one is, I'm going to be the, the donor to Valin. Okay. Yes. Wow. We wish you all the best on that trend. Um, Dr. Ari, tell us about prevention measures, because I know this can be dealt with, uh, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of, like you said, ignorance. You don't have this information. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell lovers out there, even if it's um, you know partners who are sexually active? Because we know most pregnancies, especially for young single people, are unplanned. So talk to them today. Well, the, uh, the issue of HIV is well known in the public, so most people when they're testing with partners, they test HIV. I urge the general public to add the sickling test onto that. It is very easily available in private hospitals, even in the government hospitals, and there are two main types of tests. We have the sickling test, which costs about 25000 mm -hmm. which is the screening test, and it's widely available. And also we have what we call HB electrophoresis, which is the confirmatory test, mm -hmm. and call, it's about 60,000 shillings. So the main message should be for any person who is sexually active with another partner, because of the high prevalence of this condition in the public, to test for sickle cells as well as other things before they start being sexually active. Before they start being sexually active. Yes. The other conversation maybe would be um, moving forward, if there's a couple that is already serious, they're married, they didn't have this information, uh, and they still want to get kids, yeah. can you help them in any way? Yes, yeah, very important to, right. to, to, to do this, yes. Mm -hmm. Because once you do the testing, you know that there are risks available, so you plan. Obviously, that should not affect your marriage, but you should know that you have a chances of getting this child, you prepare, because if they are young enough, the treatment is available, which is the stem, uh, the bone marrow transplantation. So you have to plan for that. So it's important, even if you're married and you don't have children, and plan children to do the tests. I would urge everyone, actually in the country, to do the test for the sake of knowing whether they have the gene or not. So the planning is on treatment options. So if they come to you and they're both sicklers or gene carriers. Yes. 
there's no preventive measure. No, there's it's not. just treatment. You get the child and you start treating the child. No, the, the beauty about that is that if you're both carriers, the chances of getting a child with sickle cell disease is about 25 percent. Okay. Because you get a defective gene from one, a defective gene from the other to get the sickle cell disease. But then also there are some you may get a no defective gene and no defective gene because it's 50-50 mm -hmm. and then you'll be fine. So three quarters of the siblings, if you use general statistics, might be okay. Mm -hmm. So even if you both have the trait, it's not that every child you give birth to will have the disease. Okay. Yeah. But if you're both sicklers, it's just a treatment yes, option definitely. for the child? Yes, definitely. Yes, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. As we come to a close, Valene, I'd like you to talk to sicklers who are watching us today. What would you tell them? Um, it's one thing, you know, we sicklers are known to be very strong people. So I just like to urge everyone there to, you know, continue being strong and whatever it is that you're fighting. Don't give up because uh, there's a reason why, you know, you're going through what you're going through. So I just like to urge every sickler out there, especially from teenagers to, you know, adults, to people who know, you know, themselves very well, you know, your body, take care of yourself, you know, keep stay hydrated, take your medications because, you know, you can, I, I still know people who live in denial up to you know this age. I have friends who live in denial. You know, someone will tell you, I don't want to take the medicine because of this and this, or I don't want people close to me or my probably my boyfriend or someone to know that I have this. And then I always tell people, the freer you are with people you're dealing with, the quicker you know you get help and the easier for you to you know. But then. We are all different and you can't blame someone for not wanting to open up. Mm -hmm. you know, the best you can do is be there for them and encourage them. But then I still emphasize on, you know, love yourself, take care of yourself, take your medications, take your water and mm -hmm. pray every day. That's what keeps me going. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene. Uh, Daddy, as you come to close your word to all the parents and uh, another call to people to turn up on Saturday. Um. For a word to parents, I would, I would urge them, all of them, to give their kids emotional support, which is very, very important. You give them emotional support, they'll feel that they're part of the family. And uh, people will always come to help whatever there's a problem, financial or what. About the event, I'm urging everyone, please, to come and help us to raise the funds to see Valent uh, take a journey to India. Others will leave it to God. When do you expect to take this journey? We expect to take this journey in November, the first week of November. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for coming in studios. We truly wish you all the best. We will turn up. I'll be there on Thank Saturday. You very much. Um, kindly turn up. Let's support sicklers. Let's support in fighting this disease. You all have a role to play. Most of you who are carriers know nothing about it. So go to the hospitals and get tested. Yes, Dr. Terry? You wanted to say something? No, no, no. All right. No, we're just telling you. We're just telling you. It's a national museum. The yes. event will be in the National Museum this Saturday. This Saturday, yes. National Museum. So yes. be sure to turn up, get out there, get tested in case you are a couple sexually active. You never know. Just get tested and get to know where you stand and measures moving forward on how to prevent your children um, from being, you know, sicklers or carriers of this particular disease. That has been the discussion on Morning at 10 TV. Morning at 10 TV still continues. Up next is Take Note. Stay tuned.